S&P is a flat. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the left-hand side, the opening call. And you can get the opening call for one month for $149. Six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred ninety nine dollars, or twenty two percent, and then for one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars and thirty or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee. Basil has about twelve archives out there, so you'll really understand how the Chapman Wave works. Check it out. You're going to get a great newsletter. You're going to get some great archives, and we're going to talk to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, right now. What's going on, Basil? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Well, I'm good. Thank you. Good. Good. So? so yeah, last week you were talking about the weather, and you said that although you were in Boston, you're so used to the warm weather that even though we were having what we had in Boston would consider to be a kind of a warmish day, you felt cold. I did. And, and you know, this is part of what we look at all the time. We are testing the waters of the climate. And basically what we're looking at here in, in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking to identify the lowest low, count each successively uh, higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially to the upside, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it's at fourth highest peak, peak D, which is the expectation of a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode that the price is going to go to at least four higher peaks. At that peak D, other things can happen. So the climate, if you think about what's happening in terms of the speed with which November's extraordinary rally occurred, um, those, those people that were extremely pessimistic, by the time it came into the last week of November, a lot of them felt, oh, my God, I, I'm missing, I, I've got to do something. So they jumped into the water. But the climate for them really was cold. They were not looking at this as a, as a bull market. They felt almost pushed into, into getting into the market. Well, so in other words, the, the psychological side was doing one thing. The price or the action was doing something else. So I like to look at this. I've had it for a long time. It's a technique I discovered years ago. I, I, I call it the Chapman Wave Dark News Cloud Cover. And basically, I'm using the Dow as an example. Whenever we get this kind of this dark news, meaning there's bad news, I'm just going to move this big rectangle away, and you'll see that every time the price going to the certain area, uh, November of 22, uh, April of 2023, uh, July of 2023, uh, the market took the bad news, which is always out there, and it came tumbling down. And one of the reasons is, that if I don't care what the news is, I always worry and, and I'm, I'm focused on what does the market think of it. So I haven't, I, I see it yesterday uh, during my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, that I'm about to put in a little rectangle here, but I, ha I have to wait a couple of days before I formalize it. I haven't even really discussed it as a dark news cloud cover. And one of the reasons is yields, which is always, I mean, all, every one of these. Highs, well, the big worry was yields. There were other things as well, but all of a sudden, yields is kind of off the chart. There's nothing, you don't have to consider yields because yields are coming down. So I said to subscribers, I'm anticipating some kind of, at the fourth peak, peak D is where other things can happen. Here we are on the Dow at this peak D at 36,264. But I, I had no really a real intention of shorting the Dow. We are short the semiconductors because of the chart formation. But you can see with these two candles from yesterday and today, this is not what you usually get when you get a very sharp decline. And one of the reasons is the market's kind of, there's more good news than bad news. So that's, for me, the big sell-off that we would expect. I don't see that. So, and I'm looking at the nine period moving average over the 14. The, the MACD is good. Stochastic's still strong at 97. I mean, textbooks tell you over 80% is overbought. I said nonsense. You want to see it holding and flat at 95, 97. That's beautiful. That's what you want. And that's where we are. So, so far, I'm looking at this as a digestive phase, just a kind of a breather. And one of the reasons is if, if you look at the 
move that in the weekly chart, I have to give this an alternate count. But basically what's happened, we are so close. We, we, we are about 800 points away from the all-time high of January of 2022 of 36,952. And we're in leg C in the monthly chart. So the closer you get, the greater the chances are that it suddenly becomes a magnet and wants to grab the price. So I, I suspect if we get into the 36,000, 600 is just going to be an eye blink away from an all-time high. So that's the positive side. But I always look at the semiconductors and say, semiconductors lead the way up and they lead the way down. Um, and in this case, it looked like they were going to be lagging. And all of a sudden, they made an all-time high. Uh, this past month, they went to 165.44. And then they made a little double top. And now we're pulling back. Not by much. We only, we've only just filled in the last big gap. But we did go short, and one of the things I'm looking at here is that if the semis are able to suddenly go from the 158 level that we're at right now in, a, in the next week or two and go above 163 and perhaps make another all-time high, that's going to be really positive. But on the short term, we've just got to watch really closely because 155 is the key support. So I had mentioned to you uh, last week that we had bought uh, Microsoft at uh, 338 and it ran beautifully up to uh, 384. And in fact, I think it was either the day we I spoke to you or the day after. And uh, we had taken small profits off, and we were looking to get back in. And this is the reason why I think for subscribers, we're watching this very closely. Because Microsoft had, had been a leader right up until about five sessions ago. Then it pulled back. But look at the nice move up today. It just it didn't even wait. I, I was hoping that we could get in for the, the little bits we took off to put them back at 1,663, and I never did that. And look, it's, it's already at 372. And this is kind of saying that there is selectivity here, but we're starting to see a broadening out. Now you're starting to see the financial start to work. That, to me, was really important. You're starting to see the leadership kind of hold. They've had a bit of a pullback. So I like what I'm seeing. And um, in my uh, um, show today, the Tiger Technicians, how I discussed uh, this Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's a particular candle that I, uh, I discovered over years ago. Um, and it's an inverted one. And I gave a whole uh, syn synopsis on what I'd be looking for in this particular candle, having made a peak D. Remember, D is what we're always looking for. Yes. And the pullback. But if you look at all the technicals here, so far the technicals are really good. And even with the weekly. So I, I suspect that the action of gold and the action of the dollar um, is telling us, and the dollar's moved up, but so far it's not a big, big deal. It's got a lot of resistance, and it's only, I mean, 102 was the, you remember I spoke to you about this left side, right side, I did this on my show as well. 102 was the low back in August of 2022. We went to 107, and I said this, this price time match is the bar symmetry where you can use the plumb line right there. Um, this is the on the 11th of October. Uh, this year, we went to the 102 level, and that should have been support, and it is support, but I still think that the dollar is, this is a bounce. So I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm saying not too much has changed uh, over the last week, even though we've got a bounce here, because I think that the market generally is holding really well. If we got that dark news. Thanks, now, Basil. Have coming. a great one. Have a safe one. Oh, thank you. Bye. <laughs> impossible to predict the